And yes, it's another day here at Eurobike 2019. The 12 halls, the two massive outdoor areas full of tech and new bike stuff. We're gonna go and find some more stuff. Check it out. I often reference Kona Bikes on the GMBN Tech Show, on our weekly new show. Uh, this, of course, is that new Process 134. There's various different iterations of this, but the 29er is where it's all at for me. Of course, 134mm travel out back. I mean, you don't really need much more than that. I keep saying this all the time. It's going to sound like a broken record, but less travel is more. You feel that terrain, you feel connected to what you're riding, and the bigger wheels help you get over some of those hits. Uh, really impressive bike from Kona, looks fantastic, the geometry is really good. Single pivot, linkage activated there. They've got it absolutely nailed. Now, I especially like this because it's slightly bigger travel than the Process 111, which was one of my all-time favorite bikes. That, of course, was 29 inch wheel. I had 120 on the front and I had 111 out back. People kind of looked at the bike and I don't think they understood it when Kona first released it. But um, it's still, I've got to say, a bike that I hope the Kona revisit in the future. I think they might. Some of the stuff doesn't necessarily mean tech. You've got to look after your bike, you've got to maintain your bike, which means you're going to have to have some quality lubricants, degreasers and that. It's all the stuff we've always needed. WD-40, for example, is showing off this stuff. It's a simple range, it's got everything you actually need to work on your bike. They're demonstrating degreaser here, they've got water displacer, they've got wet lubes, they've got dry lubes. That is the essentials you need for working on your bike. And we've got some more stuff from Raceface. This time is some of the new carbon wheels. So they're, uh, they're 800 euros front, 900 euros rear um, for a set. These are actually 36 mil carbon rims on here. So these are ideal if you're running wide trails, so uh, 2.5, 2.6, or even up to the bigger size tires if you really want to run them out there. They're nice and light, they come in boost and super boost, all of that stuff. Uh, XD driver and regular Shimano driver bodies on them. And you guessed it, as a race face, you can customize the decals on the rim. So you can go all in with the color coordination. It's definitely something we saw a lot of a few years ago, in particular with uh, the whole Envy and Santa Cruz thing. Uh, a lot of color coordination going on there, but it's kind of tailed off a bit, but there's definitely a theme of bringing colors back again here at Eurobike 2019. And of course, you know us here at GMB and Tech, we love riders of the future, the riders of tomorrow. Perhaps you've got kids, perhaps you are a younger rider yourself. In which case, you'll be looking at something like these. So this is little Honzo 24. The Honzo is their 29 inch wheel sort of trail XC type frame. Um, but this is like the kid specific one. It looks amazing, little town wall tires. Everything is scaled down. It's got proper little suspension forks on. None of that horrible heavy stuff. These are genuinely good little suspension forks. Amazing paint job on there. And at the back, they've got a little mini process 24 as well. So that's a full suspension version. Little Manitou forks on the front. Look at this thing. This is so cool. Totally not overbuilt as well. So they're doing it right along with Commissar and a few other brands that are really starting to get into gear with kids bikes. I think we need to see more of this and I feel like somehow we need to make a bit of a kid special because there are some amazing young riders coming up and some amazing bikes for them to ride. Look at that. Imagine having that when you were that small. Absolutely fantastic. Just everything about the little kids 24 inch process is scaled down. So it's got a light tune on the shock here. So it actually works really well for kids. Same with the fork. And something I've just noticed, two little cool things, in fact. Firstly, I can see on my side, rooting for a dropper post. And that's pointed out to me by Gary from Kona, something quite cool. One of the problems with kids and dropper posts, obviously kids are a lot smaller, so the amount of drop they need is quite limited. But thanks to the sort of increase in XC posts and gravel posts coming out, like 60 mil drops, and even less than that, you're gonna be able to get a proper dropper post on here that's suitable for smaller size legs. And take a look at those cranks, something cool about those, they're actually drilled out slightly shorter so they fit kids. So it's a proper crank and just shortened for kids as opposed to purpose build making a crank for kids. But uh, there you go, job done. Awesome little kids bike. How about this for a bit of bike porn? This is a custom painted Yeti. This belongs to Mr. Muckoff. That is Alex Trimnell. He owns the company. He obviously lives and breathes the brand. The bike is a 25 year special. So obviously the brand now, Muckoff, is 25 years old. It used to be x -Lite back in the day. I think I've told that story once or twice on the channel. But look at this thing. It's absolutely dripping in bling. It's got those carbon Spengel wheels on there and a full custom paint job. Absolute work of art. What do you think of this thing? Is this the craziest looking bike we've seen yet? So I've already checked out the Manitou Mesa fork. We saw this at Sea Otter Europe, and I know that Henry's a massive fan of this. Uh, it looks like an awesome fork. You've got to bear in mind as well, it's got the modern classic graphics on it. So they look a little bit like the original 
Manitou graphics. But something that's actually cooler than these, I've just spotted on the same stand here, is the new kids fork. So check this out. This is called the Machete J unit, and this is a fully featured kids suspension fork. Available in 20 inch and 24 inch compatible versions. Internally adjustable travel, 100 to 120 mil. Reverse arch on there, adjustable compression, adjustable rebound. That is a proper kid suspension fork at last. That is gonna be making a lot of kids very happy. And going along with that is another kid specific component here. Classic answer pro taper bars here, basically. But look at the diameter of these. These are tiny, so these are 15 and a half millimeters, whereas normal bars will be 22.2. .2. So that is a 22.2 .2 shim, so it can accept regular brake levers, but the grip size can be smaller, so the grip is actually a 22.2. .2. Perfect for small hands. That is amazing, I love that. Loving the fact there's proper kids componentry coming out. J unit, that's the one to get. As you probably noticed, I'm stood in front of a, or I'm stood behind, in fact, another downhill bike. So this is the Phoenix downhill bike. So this is the 29 inch wheel version. This is brand new. Moves around that uh, DW Link system. The pivot bikes are quite famous for actually, for working with that from the very beginning. It's definitely one of the best incarnations of this system. It's compatible with coil shocks and with air shocks. 190 mm travel out back. Of course, it's got the regular Fox 40 up on the front here. Pivot seem to use and work quite exclusively with Shimano and Fox, so it's quite rare for you to see a bike not spec'd with this stuff. It's also got this super boost on the rear, so that's 157, so a massive back end. I've got to say, in the flesh, this thing looks amazing. Really nice, what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, another new bike from the stable of Pivot, so that is the new Firebird. 29 inch wheel, of course, most people are diverting towards 29 inch wheels, especially in favor of big travel bikes these days. So that's 162 on the back there. So quite a lot of travel for a 29 inch wheel bike to have. Again, using that DW linkage system on there. Again, it's the very good incarnation of it that Pivot are really renowned for. So DW links have got quite a high anti-squat value. So really good for pedaling up that rough, aggressive terrain. You're not gonna get pedal strikes. The bike wants to stand up, but the way that they've managed to tweak the linkage system on here is it's very active still on the smaller bumps, so you do get that traction. It just resists the wallow that you do not want from a suspension bike when climbing off-road. Uh, carbon construction, it's got loads of nice silences built in. This is something we're starting to see actually on a lot more bikes, is much better rubber incorporation into the frame design. So out of the box, off the shelf, whichever way you want to put it, as soon as you get on the bike, it's silent. Really as they should be. We don't want bikes to be clattering around and you certainly don't want your chain to be taking away any paint off that frame. Now, as far as the color goes, my jury's out. I think I like this. It's kind of nearly a Blake Samson, olive, army, sandy, greeny, gray type color. Um, but I'm unsure. What do you guys think of the color? Is this a good way to go? Do you like these tones or do you like the Laria tones? Or do you prefer black? Whatever it is, let us know in those comments underneath. But um, I think I'd have one of these. I think it looks good. So the key to making your suspension fork or shock work as fast and as slick as possible, firstly, is by keeping it clean. That's from your side of things, from the maintenance. But from the manufacturer's point of things, it's all down to the tolerance of internal components. Now, MRP, they've been working away, uh, basically making and refining every single individual part that goes into their forks. Now, their forks are hand assembled as it is, so they're very meticulously put together. But this is really cool. This is something that they're putting in all of their new forks now. So. This is an existing bushing set, so just sliding this up and down on the shaft here. It's really quite smooth, but as you can see, it does stay in place when I leave it there. Now this is the new one. There is like, there is no friction there, and uh, you don't need to be a genius to work out just how slick in action that is gonna perform out on the trail. That is gonna be an incredibly supple fork, so that's really cool as a sort of a working update to what they're already producing. Now just above me here, you might also see this. What you can see here is a ramp control unit. So this is sitting on top of the fork here, the little orange dial, as you can see. And the idea is, as well as adjusting the air pressure in the fork, you can, uh, you can tune the ramp control towards the end of the travel, how you want it to feel. In addition to that now, you can now add on volume spaces to these. So you can completely change the air chamber characteristics of the fork. Now this one is exclusive to this fork, the Bartlett, but you can actually do it now on the regular ramp control cartridges. So again, just to emphasize that, this is the dial that you adjust that ramp control with. You inflate the air through into the fork, chamber goes straight in, this basically acts as a slave unit. And you can also add tokens on the bottom, so you can completely tune the way your fork feels by using that. 
more cool kit from MRP. Okay, so it does say EMTB, however, it is a Marzocchi Z2. I remember when these first came out in 1997. Uh, it's kind of cool to see them back. These are e-bike certified, and as the guys over on EMBN are gonna be telling you very soon, there's some changing rules coming with the specifications of stuff that's supposed to be used in a high load application. We're not talking about the intention of the product. We're talking about a combined weight of the battery, the bike, the user, all the kit they're carrying. It's been noticed that e-bikes certainly are having a bit more of an effect on products. So, one of these is going to be e-bike certified soon, and you're going to see this with more Marzocchi products and more Fox products. My guess is the rest of the market are going to follow suit. And this, thankfully, is the normal mountain bike version of the Z2. Again, the Z2 originated back in 1997, and the original one had coil springs, so twin coil springs in there, and it had adjustable compression and rebound on it, and it was an open oil bar fork. Alongside the Z1 bomber, the Z2 was one of the best forks ever made. Certainly in that generation, it really changed the way manufacturers approach. So I'm super pleased to see this back. It's available in loads of different options now. So available in 27 half inch compatibility, 29 inch compatibility, and up to 150 mil travel. So down to 100 mil travel there, and you've got different offsets available. So stoked that they have teamed up with Fox to make all of this possible. And I love the fact that Marzocchi genuinely is back. Well, there we go. That's another day of tech hunting here at Eurobike 2019. Checking out for today. Let us know what you loved in the comments underneath. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. And every time we upload another video, like tomorrow, you'll get a little, little buzz come up on your device and tell you. And for a couple more videos, click down here to see what we found on day one. And click down here to see what we found on day two. Eurobike, over and out. Ta-ta.